Hey guys, Vicky Vicky here with episode 2 of my Leeds United Manager Mode series. Uh, we're going to start off by uh, simulating the last friendly of the uh, set of three friendlies for the start of the season. We're playing FC Energy, or N Energy, I guess. Uh, I think it's a Norwegian outfit. Uh, but we get a 2 1 win, a ro uh, McCormack on the score sheet, which is good. Um, played uh, the typical sort of pretty strong team, but with a couple of changes. Um, we're still trying to pick up uh, this Stoke City 19 year old goalkeeper um, we've had an offer in for Zach Thomas which we have accepted um, I just don't fancy him guys to be honest he doesn't really fit the criteria of what we're trying to get rid of but he, he's 62 rated and he's 20 years old and just not sure he's got that potential uh, to really break through into our team um, so we're into the contract talks with uh, Daniel Backman the uh, Stoke City keeper and uh, we're looking to get him on the cheap if possible um, but he's going to be our um, first reserve keeper so second choice keeper and because he's young and there's the potential there I'm I am going to give him games whenever possible you know uh, so maybe one in four something like that just to get his uh, experience in and hopefully see him rise in ratings just in time to take over um, in net full time um, so we up against Port Vale in the Capital One Cup. Um, it wasn't a great game to be honest guys, but Austin is a superb player for me. He's my captain as well. I think he's the captain of the proper uh, Leeds United team as well. And uh, we do manage to pick up the first goal of this game. And that does actually turn out to be um, the only goal of this game. It was a bit of a damp squib. It was a bit of a, a pre-season-y, warm-up-y game. Quite good to get a Capital Cup get, uh, round in first, though, before we start the championship. It's like a more competitive friendly, if you like. Uh, so we're through to the next round of the Capital Cup, which is good, Capital One Cup. But, uh, yeah, no, no, no great shakes there. one nil win over Port Vale is nothing to uh, write home to your mother about. Um, we... Also get an offer in for Norris, you can see there, 32 years old, centre midfielder, uh, definitely one that we're looking to move on, unfortunately. Uh, not a bad player at all, actually, but it, it, there's just no money in me keeping him at 32 years old. I need to, I need a young, fresh squad. Um, we get into this championship game against Wigan, and uh, I've got Varney just behind McCormack, and again, guys, this was a really tough game. Wigan... I haven't had the greatest season in real life in the championship, but uh, in reality, guys, they've got a superb squad. They've got some excellent players, you know, so it's ne never going to be a pushover. And obviously FIFA, when they made this game, didn't know that Wigan uh, were going to have a weak season. If you think about it, that you'd probably see them as a, a, pr a promotion hopeful. And... Um, you know, so so they they were a strong outfit to have to play against, and we got that nil nil draw with them, uh, which, like I say, is not the end of the world by any means. So we go straight into the next championship game, guys. Uh, we've got some buying and selling coming at the end of the video as well, uh, but we get straight into the third game of this episode, which is against Blackpool, and again another very strong team, guys. Blackpool. Uh, are going to be right up there in real life. I think they're going to be right up there in this as well. Uh, they've got two or three excellent players. Obviously, Ince. If we get promoted, I might have a look at picking up Ince. He's sort of, he would be perfect for our team because he's uh, he can play anywhere along the three in the 4-2-3-1. Um, but, yeah, so, uh, again, a very tight game. Uh, header scored, though, by Lee Peltier um, on off the bench, I think. Oh, no, I, I put him at left back because uh, I think Warnock was uh, very fatigued from the previous games. Um, so I think Peltier was just doing me a job in the left back position. But he popped up with a lovely header. I'm not sure if it hit the top of the defender's head, and that's why it looped into the net the way it did. Um, we had another couple of good chances in this game as well. Uh, we rattled the bar twice in quick succession, as you're about to see. McCormack going through here. I thought he'd done enough to score, but it didn't quite drop into the net. Um, the danger was at this point that we were going to rue all these missed chances, and they were going to get us with something late on. But uh, that did not happen, guys. We did manage to edge out the 1-0 win. Uh, so we're not scoring enough goals, guys, at this moment in time. Defence looks good, but uh, not Sterling. They did get chances as well. But we need to improve our attack attacking options. And with that in mind, although I did put Elad Juf up for sale, just to see what I could get for him, really, 
Um, Aston Villa have come in with a 675,000 offer. His value is 725, so I'm going to hold out for that. I'm going to put a counter offer in for 725. Because if I, because he's he's a very highly rated player, El Adjouf, uh for a championship standard. You know, anyone over 70 is going to be good in the championship. And he is over 70, so he's not going to be cheap to replace, you know. So I can't sell him for, for less than his value, you know, because I'm going to need to replace him with someone costing at least that amount. Uh, we've gone in for this Hussein guy who plays in the Norwegian league, I believe. Um, basically, I, cl I clicked on him and uh, it said that he's got very high potential. And uh, that is what I'm going off. It, it, his potential seems high. Because he's in the Norwegian league, he's not too expensive and more than willing to come to the championship as well. So that is why we're looking at him. We get an offer in for Danny Pugh as well. Um, Aston Villa decided not to take that uh, counter offer. They decided to walk away from the El Hadjouf deal. Uh, Danny Pugh, though, um, it looks like he's going to be going for 200 grand. Again, he's 30 years old. We're into the contract uh, negotiations with uh, Hussein, the centre midfielder from the Norwegian League. And uh, we'll find out what happens with him in the next episode, guys. As always, get your suggestions and player suggestions in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like. It's going to need a lot of support to keep going. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.